There are plenty of things we can't live without. Food, water, shelter, bees. Yeah, you've probably heard of the phrase, save the bees. But what exactly does that mean? Bees can be adorable, right? You see them flying around patches of flowers and man, what kind of world would it be without that? Well, it's not that shallow. You see, bees are known as pollinators. They fly around flowers, get pollen stuck under their bodies, fly to another flower, and spread the pollen onto that flower. These buzzing workers are what help plant life grow. If they were to disappear from Earth, we may not be able to grow plants, effectively cutting off a huge chunk of our sustenance. I mean, humans need food to survive, right? Well, we can thank the bees for aiding in that department. That's the buzz on bees, but they can't be the only ones taking care of us. Well, they aren't. From the air to the ground, let's take a look at worms. We see them sometimes after it rains. They squirm around on the sidewalks while kids poke at them with sticks. Hey, you know you did. They aren't the most intimidating creature out there, but they play a big role in keeping us alive. Remember how I said bees help plants to grow by pollinating them? Well, worms work on the soil that provides nutrients for plants. They'll dig around down there and help to make more nutrients available to anything that might grow around them. If you think about it, worms and bees work together to help us get our crops. Worms also come in large numbers. There are about 2,700 species of worms. And in an acre of land, there can be more than a million earthworms around. You heard that right. This amount of earthworms can truly help transform an area from just a plot of land to an area ready to yield a huge amount of crops. We're seeing a couple of farming animals here. So let's explore another subject for a moment, climate change. Climate change is a hot topic, quite literally I might add, in the world of science, but it can be hard to see just how fast the effects are taking place until it's too late. That is where butterflies come in. Yeah, that's right. Butterflies are helping scientists study climate change. How's it work? Well, climate change affects butterflies too. Studies have shown that European butterflies have slowly been moving north. This is due to the changes in temperature. These butterflies prefer to stay in some milder climates. By studying this, scientists are able to track the effects of climate change and provide possible ways to prevent it from further hurting the human race. Oh, and butterflies also help to spread pollen, so let's take that as two bugs with one stone. Speaking of migration and butterflies, let's take a look at just how far they can travel. Take the monarch butterfly, for example. These butterflies can travel up to 4,800 kilometers or right around 3,000 miles in order to reach their destination. In a single day, these determined butterflies are able to travel 160 kilometers or about 100 miles before calling it a day. Monarch butterflies truly are dedicated to their long journeys. Staying on the subject of climate change, check out frogs. Much like butterflies, these animals help researchers know when it's time to take action to help the environment. When the skin of a frog starts to change color, that is a sign to check in on the habitat that they're living in. It could be a major indicator of contamination issues nearby. Whether it's in the water or on land, the frog can detect it. These bioindicators help us humans out, and without them, we may live in toxic and harmful environments. A frog skin is actually quite interesting. You might be familiar with how slimy it appears, but why is it like that? Well, a frog skin is covered with mucus glands. These mucus glands cover a layer of moist and permeable skin underneath. A frog not only breathes through its lungs, but they can also breathe through their skin. The mucus layer on their skin helps protect them from injuries while also keeping them moist. So. This complex skin is what helps detect a toxic environment. There are several ways us humans need help surviving. We'd be absolutely doomed without some of these animals. And we've just scratched the surface when it comes to the helping hands of the wilderness. Let's get even deeper into what animals can do for us. Have you ever heard an adult tell a kid to quit monkeying around? This next fact may want you to actually start monkeying around. 
Primates are often studied due to their high intelligence. We see them as a close relative to us humans. But as humans may be turning a blind eye to the harm we cause to the environment, primates are actually playing an important role in saving us. They're known as a keystone species. A keystone species is an organism that helps keep their ecosystem in order. Primates don't exactly know how much they help us since they tend to just go about their day and accidentally keep the world running. When they eat and defecate, they spread pollen and seeds around their ecosystem. You can see just how much this helps humans by looking at the tropical rainforests of the world. These rainforests influence global rainfall patterns, and by helping them stay healthy, primates work together to sustain life on Earth for all of us. Now we move on to something so small. We may not even think about how much we need it to survive. When was the last time that you thanked a plankton? Never, right? Shame on you. Wait until you hear about this. Plankton are tiny organisms that live in the water. They also are virtually incapable of moving on their own. So what do they do? They use photosynthesis to convert energy into oxygen. These hungry organisms distribute the oxygen they create all over the world. It's so widespread that half of the Earth's oxygen comes from plankton. To put everything into perspective, Think about how these plankton are so small that they can't even be seen with the naked eye. And then take something on the opposite spectrum, redwood trees. Well, plankton produce more oxygen than redwood trees. So take a deep breath and be thankful you can do so because we have plankton in the sea. Menhaden is a type of fish you may not know a lot about. It doesn't look too impressive or important, but this fish plays a big role in the sea. Menhaden are a major food source to many of the animals higher up the food chain. This doesn't just limit it to an oceanic sacrifice for the greater good of the predators, but it's important nonetheless. Without the menhaden, many other fish would not be able to survive, since such a great food source would be gone. But what does a menhaden eat? This is where the second part of what makes menhaden so important comes in. Menhaden filter feeds on oceanic algae. This helps to control the algae population, especially in farm runoffs into coastal waters. This behavior has earned the menhaden the title of the liver of the bay. One thing to know about the menhaden is that they are extremely important to the waters they live in, but it does all this hard work while also being such a tiny fish. Menhaden are generally only about 20 to 28 centimeters long, which is about 8 to 11 inches. These vital fish are unfortunately fished commercially for both bait and fish oil. This overfishing has lowered the population of the menhaden drastically, which could be devastating for the habitats it lives in as well as for us humans. Moving on to another small creature, let's look at termites. It's safe to say that many people could probably live without termites, but should we really wish for a world without them? The truth is, we shouldn't, because without termites, our forests would not be as healthy as they are. Termites are able to break down tough plant fibers. They're capable of turning dead and decaying trees into new soil. Termites also create tunnels underground that improve soil by adding more air into it. So while they might be pests to us, they're honestly a lifesaver to the world we live in. I'm sure you can already see how so many animals are needed in order for us humans to survive. We're not done yet. This ever-growing list is eye-opening in a way that shows we need to also take care of the natural environments around us. Another animal many people fear is the bat. We think of them as bloodsuckers that spread diseases, but the truth is that only one species of bat actually drinks blood. That's a tiny number, considering that one in every five mammals in the wild are bats. They're a large species, and they help us out in ways that we may not even notice. Bats eat insects. They eat so much that they're considered one of the largest consumers of insects on the planet. That means they could clear the land of any insect that could kill our crops, but they also help keep down mosquito populations. Mosquitoes are the opposite of bats. They're actually detrimental to the human race, and they're oftentimes labeled as the deadliest animal on Earth. 
This is because they're able to spread multiple diseases and kill around 700,000 humans every year. So bats swooping in to snack on these tiny menaces can help keep the fatalities down. And that shows us just how helpful these mammals are. It's a common misconception that all bats are nocturnal. While it is true that some are, there are plenty of bats that aren't. But the bats that are nocturnal are able to hunt for tiny insects in total darkness. They don't need to be able to see their prey since they use echolocation. How this works is a bat will emit inaudible high-pitched sounds. Every second, they're able to emit 10 to 20 beeps. They'll then listen to the echoes, which in turn help them to locate who or what is in their surroundings. This is such an accurate system that bats can spend all night successfully catching food that would otherwise be impossible to spot. Now that is a complex hunting system. We so often think of ourselves as a self-sustaining species, but animals such as bees and termites quietly help us with our everyday necessities. Many animals out there in the wild can protect our crops and defend us from nasty little bugs. Sometimes we feed our pets and feel fulfilled because we're keeping something so innocent alive. But out there in the wild, a monkey, a butterfly, and even a bat can feel that same sense of satisfaction knowing that they keep the earth running. So when we take a bite out of our salad or, you know, take a nice refreshing breath, we can thank the unsung heroes of the wild for making our lives a little bit easier.